another fine day here in the QC, Charlotte, North Carolina, and I'm so glad to see it. I'm glad to be amongst the living again today, living, breathing, and have my being in the most high. And as I said, this is a fine day, not so much weather-wise, but we have the Most high in our hearts and spirits today. And like I said, I'm grateful. I have an overwhelming feeling of gratefulness today towards the Most High. Just for another opportunity. Like I said, to be a monster. everyone else as well today and that you are able to get out and enjoy this day regardless of the weather here is rainy and very cold they were calling for a winter mix freezing rain sleet and snow in some places but all we have had have and all we have had here is rain and light sprinkles but the weather is right for the freezing rain and they are saying that this precipitation will last until like 7 this afternoon so it's a possibility we will get some freezing rain but I do have a thought I want to share today and it is the set apart challenge Set apart challenge. And when the Most High gave me this thought to set apart challenge, my eyebrows instantly raised as well as my curiosity. He went on to say, No, this is not a challenge per se, but a closer look at the pros and cons or the benefits of living holy than not. He first posed the question to me. What is holiness and why would he command us to walk in it if we were not able to do so? I said in my heart to him, we're to live holy because like father, like son, a chip off the whole block. He said true, but also for protection. He said I'm your father as well as your Elohim, your God. But there is another one who has this whole world blinded following his lead as the text says in 2 Corinthians 4 and 4 in whom the God of this world had blinded the minds of them which believed not lest the light of the glorious gospel of Mashiach or Christ who is the image of God or Elohim should shine unto them the image of the most high God who Mashiach, Christ portrayed, is the same we too should show off as his children. It's who we are as opposed to something we just do. As the text says, there has to be a clear distinction of those who are mine and who are, are his. He went on to say that Hasatan is a very sneaky character who likes to blur the lines when it comes to truth. He's the master counterfeiter, manipulating the truth just enough to deceive the masses. Hasatan's followers are working for a lost cause. Most of his followers are in the dark also. Or as the script says, they are the blind leading the blind. As seen in Matthew 15 and 14. Let them alone. They be blind leaders of the blind. And if the blind lead the blind, both shall fall into the ditch. These are the false teachers of the word who says that you don't need to be holy and set apart when the scripture says so clearly that you do. These are the same teachers that harp on mercy and grace like they are the only two strings on the guitar. Yes, there is a place for mercy and grace which without none of us would be able to see the glorious light of the gospel. 
However, after we see it, we are responsible for walking in its truth. There is also a place for holiness, the set apart. How will the world know my people from the world itself? He asked. John 13 and 35 says, By this will they know you are my disciples if you love one another. Yes, because of the love we have for each other, but also for the Father, who through Christ said, If you love me, keep my commandments, John 14, 15. We are also known by our walk, talk, and even the way we breathe differently. As the text says in Acts 17 and 28, For in him we live and breathe and have our being, as certain also of your poets have said, for we are also his offspring. Many will see and come out and be separate because of my people's stance on living righteously. Some would say that old fashioned way is totally played out and done away with. However, the text says in Jeremiah 6 and 16, this is what the Most High says, stand at the crossroads and look, ask for the ancient paths, Ask where the good way is and walk in it, and you will find rest for your souls. This brings up another thought the Father presented to me. He said, weigh out the benefits of living right as opposed to not. This is what these crossroads mean in this prior text. It says to look down each road and discern where you have come from and where you are going, and if you truly want to continue down the same roads, that have been so rough. The text then goes on to say, ask for the ancient paths. This is the way of the old, the text speaks about in Matthew 7 and 14. Because straight is the gate and narrow is the way which lead unto life, and few that be that find it. I think this text is saying that we need to get off the broad road that is leading many to destruction and ask for and get on the ancient paths of holiness. Because as we clearly see, there is a warning back in verse 13, which says, Enter ye at the straight gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat. Basically, that text is saying that there are a many of folk that just want it their way and refuse to heed the call to righteous living. However, without holiness, no man shall see the Most High, as we see in Hebrews 12 and 14. Let it be your ambition to live at peace with all men and to achieve holiness, without which no man shall see the Most High. So basically, holiness or the set-apart life is the currency to making it into the kingdom, not just grace and mercy. Could this possibly be part of the treasure we are to be stacking away in heaven? As seen in Matthew 6, 19-21, Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth, where moth and rust doth corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. The Most High then reminded me that as we weighed the way of the world against being set apart unto Him, we would want to be holy as He is holy because it's simply who we are and where our hearts are at. And also I said part of the treasure, and I just wanted to add to that, I believe personally the other part of that treasure is where the script says he that wins souls are wise. I believe when we win souls as unto the most high, that's part of our treasure being stacked away to the kingdom but also <clears throat> it's important to know that in order to win those souls they're gonna have to see us living what we're talking about 
are not just going to be able to talk about live right come out from amongst them and be holy when we ourselves are living such a shabby lifestyle and then we want to go to the father and say I sorry please forgive me I won't do it again until next week after that guilt has played off a bit after the seemingly separation the most high has allowed you to feel won't he do it <laughs> folks quick to say won't he do it huh but they don't want to talk about that he'll let you feel that cold cold separation from him which I believe he let Christ feel when he was on the tree or if you're on the tree and it's not that he left him per se couldn't look, on, look upon him as we spoke in our recording on him, in the prior recording. That the father turned from the son in order for him to turn back his attention to us. Which at the same time, he never really left us. this fella means well but we can't trust every everybody with our best interests I'd rather trust somebody that died for me somebody that gave his life for me
like it says in the text, there's no greater love for someone who, to give his life for a friend. But I also think there's no greater love than for someone to give their son's life for a friend or for a daughter or son. That's, that's powerful. Greater love, there's no greater love, there's no greater love, there's no greater love for a man to lay down his life for a friend. There's no greater love, there's no greater love, there's no greater love. There's no greater love, there's no greater love For a man to lay down his life for a friend There's no greater love, there's no greater love There's no greater love Thank the Most High for a wonderful day to be alive Another opportunity to speak on the goodness of the Most High and all He's doing for me. It really means the world to me to get out here daily and share how good the Father is to me. And to share the thoughts that He gives me daily. Because as the text says, I know the plans that I have for you. And I think one of the text reads, I know the thoughts that I have for you. The thoughts to do you good. And see, how many of us know that we need this daily? We can't go off a person's love from last week. Or a person's love for us a month or two ago. Especially when we walk with them every day. See, it's encouraging to know that he's walking and talking with us every single day. Every single day. And that's going to be my time. The Most High just reminded me we're going to keep it short and sweet. Stay up and keep pushing forward in the right direction. Shalom.
Probably think I wanna get my squats in today. And my walk and my ride if all possible.